It is my privilege to welcome our guest today. He was a headliner for the Sola Soul Eddie last night. Okay, that, that's right, okay. And then uh, he, his music is labeled as emo rap because he wears his heart on his sleeve and he just puts all of his emotions into his music. He uh, has a real message as a rapper representing Christ above all else. Help me welcome S.O. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a blessing to be here. Thank you so much, uh, Biola, you know, the whole team. Thank you guys for having me. Last night was a, was a great night. I had a great time. It wasn't as cold as it is where I'm normally from, from London, England. So, yeah, yeah man, it's good to be here. All right, all right. Well, you know, so in, in your music, you have a, um, a theme, if I can say, about finding satisfaction in Christ. Yeah. What does it mean for us to find satisfaction in Christ in a world that is, that is, uh, that is trying to get our affections? I think um, as an artist, you're trying to convey what's happening in your life and hoping that other people that you're writing it for can relate to that. Mm-hmm. So even, even when, I, when I was shaping those songs, what was going on in my life was I had just broken up with my girlfriend um, at that moment who I really, really wanted to marry. Yeah. And I ended up marrying her, so that's, that's a great thing. Hey, it came back. It came back. All right. It came back. Um, and I think that this world is fighting for our affections, yeah. fighting for, hey, man, why don't you avoid biblical truth yeah. and pursue things that dishonors God? Yeah. Uh, so to find satisfaction in Christ is to realize above all else, nothing else matters except for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's a hard truth, you know? So yeah. even that phrase, only Christ can truly satisfy, I got the idea from John chapter four, right? So we see Jesus interacting with the woman at the well, yeah. and she doesn't know who's in front of her, right? She's like, yo, give me water. I don't want to come here again and have to fetch water again. He says, look, if only you knew who was standing in front of you, you would ask for an eternal water so you would never be thirsty again. Yeah. Um, and I think it's understanding the person of Christ knowing that only him and him alone can satisfy us, even when the world and things of this world try to buy our attention, right? Right. Because those things are only temporary, you know, and they seem as though that they're not going to be temporary. But once you, I was talking to my friend just yesterday who's wrestling with the Christian faith, so on and so forth, and and he was even telling me, like, yo, it seems like this life is a, is a rat race. Once you get to one level, you have to go to the next level, then you go, or go to the next level. It's only in Christ that we're fully satisfied. That, yo, the one level is justification, sanctification, glorification in him. Yeah. And above all else, there's nothing else except for Jesus. Yeah. All right, all right. So, well, you're talking about satisfaction in yeah, Christ, above yeah. all things. How, well, what is it about your story? And tell us a little bit more about your story, about how you decided that is what I want my life to be about? I don't know if I decided or it was decided for me. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I don't think anybody is really waking up like, yo, man, I just, I just want to be satisfied in Jesus. I just, I think we want to be satisfied in other things. I think God yeah. has to remove those things from us yeah. to show us that he's the only one that can satisfy us. So going back to the story of my now wife, we were together for, for like two years and um, long story short, we broke up, and I really made her an idol, you mm. know, and she made me an idol in her life. Mm. And God had to separate us to reveal to us that sin. Yeah. Had we stayed together, we wouldn't have seen that. We would have thought these two black kids in love, and, you know, we just, <laughs> we love Jesus, but you know, <laughs> we're missing out on things, you know. So I don't, I don't think that I woke up one day thinking, yes, immediately this is what I want to do. I think that God had to remind me and show me that, He was the one, even if I ended up not marrying her, even if I ended up not moving to America. There were so many things that I was making idols in my life that God had to remove to remind me that he is the only one that can do that. So I think as he did that, then I saw like, raw, like everything else in life is cool, but what matters most is Jesus and what I do for him and, and if he's pleased with me. Yeah. Ultimately. So. All right. Well, you know, I think um, the idea of finding satisfaction in Christ is something that we get in our heads. Like, yes. I think we all say that is something that we want. But you know what? I think, again, you were saying we, we fight that in our hearts. How do we really get this into our heart? It's a very good question. So good 
that I was talking to my friend about it <laughs> this morning. I was like, right, that's a really, that's a really deep question. And I think that the main thing is seeing things for what they are. You know, if I, if I see the world for what it is, if I see my time on earth for what it is, yeah. then finding satisfaction in Jesus becomes an easy thing, mm. right? If I realize that everything that I'm pursuing is temporary, Mm-hmm. and the only thing that's eternal is my relationship with Christ, then everything else kind of falls into perspective, right? You know, a lot of us in here maybe are dating or maybe want to be married and have that desire, but even marriage is temporary. Mm-hmm. You know, even our jobs, being a rapper, like I'm gonna, I'll be 50 rapping, I don't, I don't think so. Like, I, <laughs> like I'm, not sure, I'm not sure I'll be doing that, you know? Like, leave that to other artists, no names. Um, <laughs> Um, but even, even what we do is temporary. So putting things in the right perspective, even when we don't want to find satisfaction in Christ, yeah, it's good. truth doesn't change, yeah. right? So if that truth of this is temporary, earth is temporary, 70, 80, 90 years, and that's it compared to eternity, then even when I'm not willing or, un, or not wanting to, Christ's satisfaction still has to live in me because it's like, yo, I got it. That's not going to last forever. Only this is going to last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You know, most of us in this room are college students. Why is it it's so important then for us to find that satisfaction or to, to be on that journey to find that satisfaction yeah. in college? I think that college, um, you know, because I, I was once in your, in your shoes, is a very, uh, we're in a bubble in this context. Mm. Like the real world doesn't really affect us as much. You know, we, we feel the struggle, so on and so forth, but ultimately we're safe in Biola, behind the gates in our dorm rooms. I don't know how small your beds are, but it's probably tiny. Like, you know, you're, you're in your context, just living your life, drinking your smoothies, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we went to one today and it was really nice. You know, shout out to them. We had a wild strawberry, berries, orange juice. It was fire, I won't lie. Um, <laughs> But once we get out into the real world, they're like, oh, this is, this is real. I got to get a job. Oh, snap, family, wife, husband, kid, responsibility, so on and so forth. So understanding and finding satisfaction in Jesus is really deepening your relationship with Christ. That's the bottom line of what it is. So yeah. doing that now rather than later saves a lot of headache. You know, it saves a lot of learning when you get to a, a place of, yo, I don't have enough time anymore. Yo, I have so-and-so responsibility. You know, you already built biblical principles, biblical things that will guide you through your life. So yeah. That's what I would say. Well, what are some of the things right after college then for you that were like really surprising? Oh man, I'm not in this bubble anymore. Like what are some of the things that said, wow, I do need to f- deepen my relationship with Christ? Uh, moving back home, you know, and... Uh, I, I think the main thing, this here's what I would say to, to anybody in here, like, yo, finding a good church family just saves a lot of those yeah. tensions. Yeah. You understand? And I think in, in college, university, where I'm from, um, in college, it's, it's easy, particularly where, like, this, everybody is kind of, like, in the same mindset. Uh, it's easy to be like, oh, this is a breeze. They all thinking like me, talking like me, uh, you know, walking in my path. And like when I got out of, of uni, I was like, oh, snap. Like, oh, wow, mom, you, I got to pay bills? Okay, uh, all right, I, yeah. I, I got this, all right. Or I have to now go get a job or I have to navigate people that I left behind when I was uh, in, in college and stuff like that. So I think this is the moment uh, where we can be intentional uh, about wanting to grow in Christ so that when those situations arise, which they will, we're already equipped and prepared for that. All right, all right. Well, what, what in your mind separates you as a Christian artist from, let's say, other rappers? And what is it about your message and how you try to portray that that might separate you from the way other people might be doing their music? Yeah, you know, so let's just take, like, the biggest rapper in the world right now. His name's Drake. You know, I, don't you know, I don't know if you know him. You know, he has a, has a song called In My Feelings. I, I don't know. You might know that. You might know that guy. Um, you know, a hip-hop, hip-hop is very braggadocious, right? Hip-hop is very misogynistic. Um, and we, as Christian artists, desire to just bring our biblical worldview through our music. You yeah. know, I, the, 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 the beats 
are relatively similar. Um, it's just the content that's different. Right? So instead of saying, y'all want to sleep with five girls, you know, I do my thing at night. No, we want to go home to our wives, you know, we want to yeah. honor our wives. Instead of saying, yo, I want to <laughs> I want to squander money, man, yo, let's go pop it in the strip club. No, we're going to save it, put a check in the savings. We're going to see how we, you know, <laughs> instead, you know, instead of, so it's literally antithetical to uh, what hip hop is, is conveying. You know, instead of saying, yo, like, let me see how much I can stack, you know, in order to have chains and flaunt my wealth. It's not, nah, let me see how much I can give yeah, to those who are in need. So give to those, like, if I see my brother in need and I don't help him, the Bible says I don't have love in my heart. Yo, hip hop artists, like, nah, forget that. Like, forget the people in the hood. Now I'm gonna do my own thing. Well, that's not biblical. So yeah. we just try to, you know, particularly for me, it's about, yes, conveying what I believe in and my emotions and the truth of living as a Christian, but also being able to give a antithetical message to uh, what the world is offering. All right, well, here's our first question. It seems you have a unique background for a rapper having lived in Nigeria, England, and the US. How have those different cultures influenced your music? That's a good, good question. Any Nigerians in that? Okay, oh, oh, one? One Nigerian over there, yeah. Hey, shout out to my sister over there, I see you, you know. It's actually funny because I, uh, when I was renting my car yesterday, I, uh, the guy that was doing the whatever, he's uh, from Cameroon, and as soon as we saw each other, it was, it was like a, a unique bond. We dapped each other up, started talking about how when was the last time we've been home, so on and so forth, and and I think even not just my music, it affects how I live, it affects how I how I see the world, and yeah. you know now I'm. I'm kind of embracing my, my Nigerian roots more in some of my music. So some of the sounds, yeah. uh, like the Afrobeat sound is being more prevalent in my music. Some of the slang, some of the lingo. Yeah. Um, and then obviously like the UK, that's, UK raised me. It taught me how to, you know, do things that I won't mention in here. <laughs> it, uh, it, uh, you know, UK taught me how to, how to talk, how to walk, taught me how to wear the right pair of sneakers. I remember when I was, when I first went to London and, you know, I had like, there's Reebok and I had Rebore. <laughs> you know, it's, it's no joke. I, I was like nine, you know, and all the kids in the playground making fun of me. So it taught me how to like have thick skin. So yeah, man, it's definitely affecting everything. So you're going to hear more um, in a coming album, like of those three cultures kind of syncing together. That's cool. I had ASICs. And Asia, yes. so it's one of those things. Where, no, don't wear the Asia, wear the A6. You gotta learn. It's, it's one of those things, okay. Have you gotten any resistance or opposition from the hip hop community because your message is so contrary? It's a very good question. I haven't personally, um, but I can see it happening for other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll put it like this. I think that those who aren't Christians love when you give them righteousness with ratchetness, mm. right? We should, we should put that on the shirt, unpack. Man. Let me unpack. It's already on the shirt. It's oh, it is? Okay, my bad. Um, <laughs> you know, sorry. So then put us, Chance the Rapper, right? Anybody familiar with him? Yeah. He, yeah, woo, woo, woo. Let me, let, me, let me break your woo for a second. All right, so Chance the Rapper will say, yo, I'm a Christian rapper, right? He'll say that. But on the other instance, he'll say, she doesn't mind if I put the booty on the Gucci belt. Like, it's in the same song. Right. I'm, you know, so he... He won't get any opposition because he's not challenging the sinful actions and deeds of those who he's around, yeah. I don't think, right? And, and I think that's where the opposition will come from. So it's not, yo, non-Christians love Christian hip-hop. They love it. It's, it's not a, they just want something positive they can listen to and bop their heads to. It's when you start to tell them, Jesus is Lord, mm. yo, the way you're living, the way you're treating women is wrong. Then you start to face that opposition. But if you, if you don't do that, they're going to love you for days. They're going to love you. So you know, that's not why I haven't faced opposition. We just haven't been in that context yet to be like, yo, this is wrong, this is right. And even in those contexts, I think people, people think it's easy to be having those conversations. It's actually pretty difficult to steer the conversation the Christ way and be like, hey, man, what you think about that? Yeah. Or... How do you interact with this as a non-believer and as a Christian, so on and so forth? So yeah. I think that does happen, though. Yeah, the, thanks, the for, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. 
Here's another question. How did God reveal that you had made your girlfriend slash wife an idol? How did you know something is an idol? So you know something is an idol when you put that thing before God. Like when you put that thing in the place of where God is meant to be, that's how you know that thing is an idol. Or in my instance, when you feel as though I cannot live without this thing or this person, and they're not even one. You ain't one yet. You're just boyfriend and girlfriend, whatever that means. Uh, all right. Because uh, she won't, she, you know, she just bay before anyone else. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. um, so that's how I knew she was an idol. Like, yo, like, oh my gosh, if I don't have her, I'm going to die. I can't. No, you're not, bro. Like, you go, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be okay. You know, like, you're, you're actually going to be fine. And so that's how I knew that Sophia, my, my bride, uh, now was an idol. So God had to strip her away from me and me from her in order to reveal that to us. And ultimately, in his time, he brought us back together. And now we're married. Sovereignty. Yeah. That's how it works. Absolutely. Okay. Here's another question. Pursuing my passions seems selfish. How do you know if God is calling you to be an artist? Hmm. That's a good question. I think so. Here's, here are a few things that I, I would take from my life. One just having the passion and the gift for it. So outside of passion, you can be passionate but not gifted. So having the gift for it yeah. and other people affirming that gift. Yeah. Like, oh, man, you're a really good rapper. Or you're a really good painter. You should really pursue painting. Well, perhaps you should. Um, and then also God bringing people into your life that will help you to develop that gift and also share that gift with others. Yeah. So that's what happened with me. You know, I was rapping in church 15, 16, in a base, in like literally my church was in a basement somewhere, and then someone saw it, he was in a big group at that time, he was like, yo, I think you can do really well at rapping. Let me introduce you to other people. I meet one person. Before you know it, the next day I'm in the studio, and then before you know it, I'm performing album, this, this, this. So that's kind of how it worked. I didn't really like push for anything. Go just kind of open doors, and things started to happen. Yeah. You know, so. All right. All right. Here's another question. I saw that you studied theology in college. How has that impacted your music? Yeah. So I would say when I when I first graduated in 2010, I did a, a, a BA in theology. My first project was the Five Solas mixtape. So I was like, oh man, I, I had just solar scriptura. I was going in, and then I realized that yes, theology is good, but then how do I apply that theology? when someone dies, right? Mm -hmm. How do I apply that yeah. theology when I'm trying to control my passions in purity, so on and so forth? So what yeah. I've done now is taking what I've learned, right, and what I'm still learning with everyday life, mm. you know what I mean? And seeing how the two can be married, yeah. you know what I mean? So I'm just taking a, a theology with practical living, you know? So I would say it's, it's Proverbs meet Romans. Okay, you know Proverbs I mean? meets Romans. That's, that's what we're yeah, doing. Yeah, that's good, that's good. All right, here's another one. Can you rap a verse for us? Okay. We could give you a beat. Isaac could throw the beat down if you want, if you need something. So. I gotta remember a verse. I gotta see if I remember a verse. Straight bars, no need for melodies. My dad told me I'm the one, what you telling me? Me and G, 10 plus years, hit with the energy. Still got the remedy, dude serving a felony. Told me he loved SIC. Bump that before HOV, come see his POV, nothing to play with. 99 Neo scene, stuck in the matrix, man, he can't erase it. Peel off in the spaceship, how in a cell. It's time in the seat if a season to see the swell. See, I don't even know my verses. I don't even, I don't even know my verses. That's how, <laughs> that's how you know. I don't, even, I don't even know my verses. I don't even know my, I don't even know my verses. I, I don't even know how rappers remember yeah. it. I don't, know, I don't even know how rappers remember any I'm of their working, verses. I'm it's working just on like, an album right now. It's just like, words. It's like, all these, whoa. All these songs, I don't even know. Like, I, I feel like I just gave you, a, I just did you guys a disservice. Riding through the city like I hold the keys. Show the ring and for sure they try to show us schemes. Young S with the naughty was my older thing. 
Now I'm blessed with a godly love, Jehovah Queen. I'm going in, tailor made, go sold it in. Uh, days we pray, no more lazy days, we can stow the yens. Uh, walk by faith and it's safe to say we were born to win. And if we fall on our faces, it's time to go again. London nights got me scheming and dreaming, interceding for people. God, give me your reason, cause we lean in the evil. God, give us your Eden, cause we pray and we need you. Lord, this is the season. If you feed us, we're guaranteed we won't leave with a grievous. Pledge allegiance to evil leaders, deceiving with treason. Man. But as I'm standing here, I can give it up. Two hands in the sky when I give it up. There you go. There you go. That's Two hands better. in the sky. No, I can't, I can't, you know. We ain't give it up. Yeah. I, no, no, I can't. I was like, yo, that first one, that kind of messed me up. You know what I mean? I was like, hey. I came from a, from a battle rap culture, so like, you can't be messing up raps. You know, when, they, <laughs> when they ask you to rap, it can't happen. No, seriously, though, like, you know, sometimes when you're rapping a song, mm -hmm. is it like you just like, oh, blah, 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 and, you know, and people are like listening, but you just kind of like mumble things? That happened last night. That happened? Okay. I just well, it's the thing, because you wouldn't know unless you know, no. You know, like, <laughs> I do it so stylistically, you would, you know. You See, no one know. knows, right? You it's one of those know. things. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm glad that someone admitted to it. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay. How do I remember to be satisfied in Christ when the temporary things are so visible and present and the eternal things are so invisible and difficult to see? Oftentimes, we're looking for signs. Oh, God, part the Red Sea. Show me a sign from heaven that you're real. But he puts people in our lives to reveal those truths to us. Yeah, that's so good. You know? So I think... The, the visible things can also be the people that you're around. So you have to be choosing your friends wisely, uh, be choosing who you go to for wise counsel wisely, and they will remind you, even when you don't want to be reminded that, yo, those things that you're pursuing, they're temporary. Let me show you that though God is invisible, he is visibly here through me. You know, and you know, I think we forget that, man. So I would say to that, just... You know, look around you. Look who can uh, remind you of those things. Yeah, I hear that. All right. Here's another question. What do you do during the times when God feels really distant? Good. Good question. And um, I think the, 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 the hard answer is he's not distant. We are. Mm. Can I get a hmm? Because that was a hmm. That was a hmm. That's another shirt. That was a, that was Righteousness a... and rashness. He's not... He's not distant, we are? Yeah, I'm on gonna, the back, all right. Bio, you can have that for free, I'll give you that. Just give me, <laughs> give me, give me 25%. Um, he's not distant, we are. So it's not that God needs to realign himself with us, it's that we need to realign ourselves with him. And when he feels distant from us, it's because we're distant from him. Um, so what do I do in that moment when he feels distant is, yo, know, I just do the basic biblical principles that all Christians should be doing. Reading Bible, praying, fellowshipping with one another, confessing our sins, right? Just those four things will allow us, right, to bring us back to the Father. And even in those moments of distance, man, we should be, because sometimes they're like, yo, I'm doing all those things, but he still feels like he's far away. Let me encourage you to not give up. To, to in those moments know that he is shaping you in your suffering. Like, I've, I've been through quite a lot, right, in my music, and you, you, you hear some of that stuff. And in those moments, I'm like, yo, God, what are you doing here? Why do you feel away? But then when a year, two years go by, I look back, I'm like, oh, you were shaping me to look more and more like your son. Yeah. Oh, okay, wow. I didn't know. Yeah. And so we need, even in those quiet, distant moments, we need to know that God is still there. Oh, it's, it's, like a, it's like a flame that looks like it's not burning, but God is right there still burning with you. Uh, so be encouraged, whoever asks that question, to know that when God feels distant, he's not. God isn't distant from us. He's right there with us. Imagine that, like, we've departed from him from time to time. But he's still there with us, saying, yo, what's up? I'm with you. You know, and it's, it's for us to then be like, yo, Father, forgive me. Let me come back to you. All right, you know? all right. Well, here's another question. How do you stay uh, Christ-centered in a primarily self-centered industry? I have a good wife. Mm. <laughs> you know, I will lie. I got that helps. My wife, so my wife, sometimes she vets my lyrics. 
Um, she's not a rapper, so I, I don't know why she does it. But uh, <laughs> she, she, she vets my lips, like, yo, what's that mean? Yo, why are you saying that? How do you think that's going to... So just having people around you that can remind you to keep the main thing the main thing. Mm. You know, like, we, can, we, can, we get easily easily swayed by things that happen and things that we want to we want to achieve. I want a million, I want a hundred million streams. So there's a way to get it. But is that worth your soul? Nah, it's not. Y'all want a million dollars. Well, there's a way to get it. But is it worth you losing your life and gaining the world and then losing your soul? Of course not. So that's how I, how I stay Christ-centered, man. I just remember that, yo, like if I, if I go self-centered, I'm, I'm potentially losing my soul in that moment. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, you know, the, our, the last question we ask all of our Biola Hour guests is, what are some of the bu- biblical principles that help shape your thoughts for today? So right now, obviously, you know, just in a, in a, in a marriage phase forever until <laughs> I get to heaven, right? So this is my, this is my phase. Um, and, and let me encourage anybody here who desires to be married, right? Because the main principle I'm looking at right now is, yo, forbearance and grace goes a long way. Mm. You know what I mean? Christ loved me. His love is shown to me. Now I need to show that love to my spouse, right? Even when I don't want to, even when it doesn't feel comfortable, when it doesn't feel like, ah, whatever, nah, you didn't say goodnight to me last night. Well, okay, <laughs> gotta wake up and still love you. Mm. Or you did this thing to me. Nah, I still gotta forbear with you and show grace to you. Why? Because the grace of God has been shown to me. So how can I, as a believer, not show grace to other people, specifically my wife, when the Father in heaven sent his son down to die for me, a sinner? See, we, we, we sometimes like be forgetting that reality that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Think about that. Whilst you were still sinning, doing what you were not meant to be doing, Christ still died for you. So how then can I not show love to other people if that kind of love has been shown to me. So my my main biblical principle right now is just loving other people the same way that Christ loved me. I can't hate my brother. I can't beef with my sister if he's loved me as much as he has. In fact, the Bible teaches, I know we got to go, but the Bible teaches that if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. And I'm meant to be loving my neighbor. My closest neighbor is the person in my house, right? The person right next to me, and that's my bride. So my, my, my real time, real life right now is loving others as Christ has loved me. Amen. Discover who you're called to be at Biola University, a leading Christ-centered university in Los Angeles, with programs on campus and online. Subscribe for more of our videos and learn more at biola.edu.